In this segment, we will uh, solve few problems related to biomechanics of muscles and joints. So in problem number one, we have to find the torque that is produced at the elbow by the biceps brachii muscles inserting at an angle of 60 degree on the radius when the tension in the muscle is 400 newtons. Assume that the muscle attachment to the radius is three centimeters from the center of rotation at the elbow joint. So this uh, force is 400 newtons and this angle is 60 degree. So this uh, alpha is 60 degree. If we resolve this force into two components, so they will be F sine alpha and the second will be F cos alpha and alpha is 60 degree. So this is the point of uh, generation of this, uh, this force and this is the point at which we want to find the torque. So that is actually the elbow joint. So this moment arm is three centimeters. So this is a simple problem. Uh, we have to apply simple equation of torque. So let's suppose we, we take torque to be clockwise as positive. So that at elbow joint will be equal to this Fm sine alpha into uh, the moment arm. So Fm is 400. Yes, yeah, the, the torque because of the horizontal component will be zero because that is just passing through to the, through the point at which we want to find the torque. So this is the uh, horizontal component of that force. So torque will be because of the perpendicular components that this one. And torque because of this component, the horizontal will be zero. So that will be 400 into uh, sine 60 into three centimeters. So if we convert this uh, three into meters, so that will be three over 100. So that will be actually 400 into sine 60.03. So that will be approximately equal to 104 Newton meter. But you, you might have noticed one thing that we are taking the clockwise torque to be positive, but in this case, the clock is counterclockwise. So you can see that the tendency of this force, this perpendicular component to create a torque at this point is counterclockwise in this direction. So we will have a negative sign here because that is against the convention that we are using and that is clockwise torque to be positive. So we can write as minus 104 Newton meter. So minus will show that this is opposite to this direction of clockwise or we can simply write 104 Newton meters counter clockwise. So I hope it is clear to you. In second problem, we have to find the tension. How much tension may be developed in muscle with the following cross-sectional areas. Assume that the tension generating capability of muscle tissue is 90 Newton per centimeter squared. So what is the tension created uh, by a muscle that has a cross-sectional area of four centimeter square, another has a 10 centimeter square cross-sectional area, the third has 12 centimeter square how much tension may be developed in each of these three muscles. So we know that uh, the stress or pressure is equal to force per unit area. So force will be equal to stress into, into area. So in first case, that will simply be equal to 90 
newton per centimeter squared into 4 centimeter squared so that will be uh, 360 newtons in second case that will be equal to uh, 90 newton per centimeter squared into 10 centimeter squared so that will be equal to 900 newtons and in the third case that will be equal to 90 into 12. So that will be 1080 newtons. That, that simply means that uh, greater is the area, cross-sectional area of, the, of a muscle, the greater will be the force that that muscle can, can apply. So larger a muscle is the greater force it can apply. Uh, the third example is related to the shoulder joint. So if the weight of the forearm is 30 newtons, uh, this weight, the moment arm for the total arm segment is 30 centimeters. So this thing. And the moment arm for the deltoid muscle is 3 centimeters. So I just will explain what is, where is this three centimeter. How much force must be supplied by the deltoid to maintain the arm in this position? And secondly, what is the magnitude of the horizontal component of the joint reaction force RH? So this thing, this weight of the arm as a whole is 33 newtons. The distance of the of this uh, weight, the point at, at which this weight is acting to the shoulder joint is 30 centimeters. This Fm, this force is to be found and the distance of the point of application of this force from this joint, uh, this distance, small distance is 3 centimeters. So now the shoulder joint is ball and socket joint and with respect to the type of joints that you might have studied in theory of machines, this is a, this is a pin joint. So it has two reaction forces, one in horizontal direction and other is one in, in vertical direction. So RH and RY. So we have to find the magnitude of this horizontal force, horizontal component of the joint reaction force that is R subscript H. So let's solve it. So again, we take the clockwise torque to be positive and in equilibrium, the sum of torques about shoulder joint should be equal to zero. So the, the torque because of the weight of the arm is uh, in the clockwise direction. So that is 33 into 30. That is clockwise. And the torque because of this force of the deltoid muscle will be in the, in the counterclockwise direction. So that will be minus uh, F subscript M that is to be found into into three. So that should be equal to zero. So torque because of this weight of the arm will be in the clockwise direction with respect to this point and the torque because of this force will be in the counterclockwise direction. And the torque because of joint reaction forces RH and RY will be zero because they are passing through this point so their moment R will be zero. So resulting torque will also be zero. So if we rearrange, we will have this to be equal to 33 into 30 divided by three. So that force will be equal to uh, 330 newtons. So in order to keep the arm in, in equilibrium, 
uh, this force by the deltoid muscle should be equal to 330 newtons. Secondly, we have to find the joint reaction force, the horizontal component of joint reaction force. So that will be uh, that will be found using another equation of equilibrium. So let's suppose we say the sum of the forces and taking the forces in the right direction to be positive. So sum of the horizontal forces should be equal to zero. So there are two horizontal forces. So this R subscript H is in the right direction. And this, uh, this uh, F subscript M, the force of the deltoid muscle is in the left direction. So their sum should be equal to zero. So this RH will be equal to this Fm, F subscript M, and that will be equal to 330 newtons. So in a way, this, this joint is producing the resistive force equal to the force generated by the muscle. It is not asked in this question, but if you want to find the vertical component of the joint reaction force, in order to in order to complete the analysis so this was in in the horizontal direction so let's call it x so we call it y sum of the forces in the vertical direction should be equal to zero in order to keep the arm in, in equilibrium so this weight of the arm 33 newton is acting in the downward direction so that will be minus 33 and this Ry has to be found and there is no other vertical force. So the vertical component of joint reaction force will be equal to 33. Sorry, Ry. So Ry will be equal to 33 newtons. Let's solve. Uh, another example, the last example. So this is related to the elbow joint. How much force must be produced by the brachioradialis and biceps? How much force should be this F subscript M? To maintain the 15 Newton forearm and hand in the position shown, given moment arms of five centimeter for the muscles and 15 centimeters for the forearm slash and weight. What is the magnitude of the joint reaction force? So this weight of the forearm is 15 newtons. This moment arm of this force is 15 centimeters. We have to find this uh, muscle tension and this moment arm of, of the muscle force is 5 centimeters. And we are interested to find the torque about this point that is the elbow joint. And actually this component of the joint reaction force is the vertical component. This must also have the horizontal component as well. So that would be zero. That is why it is not shown, but uh, in order to show all forces, we, we are showing it here, R subscript H. So this is also a similar problem. So using the equations of equilibrium, the sum of the torques about elbow joints should be equal to zero, considering clockwise torque to be positive. Or because of the weight of this forearm will be clockwise. So that will be 15 into 15, because force is 15 newtons and distance is 15 centimeters. And the torque because of this muscle force will be counterclockwise, so that will be negative. And its moment arm is, is five centimeters. And torque because of this joint reaction force will be zero because of zero moment arm. So that will be equal to 15 into 15 divided by five. So that will be equal to 45 newtons. 
So the muscle force should be 45 newtons in order to keep the arm in equilibrium. Second, we have to find the joint reaction force. So the vertical component can be found using the equation of equilibrium in the, in the vertical direction. So that will be equal to this Fm, F subscript M minus this weight. We are taking uh, the forces in the upward direction to be positive. So we are taking this weight to be negative because it is acting downwards. And we assume that uh, this uh, joint reaction force, the vertical component of joint reaction force is also acting. This force was found to be 45, this weight is 15. So vertical components turns out to be 30 newtons. And if we talk about the horizontal component, so there is only one horizontal force that is this horizontal component of the joint reaction force itself. So that will be equal to zero. So we solved some simple problems for the biomechanical analysis of uh, the muscles of upper extremity and the related joints. In the next segment, we will solve some problems related to, to the backbone, especially considering the manual material handling tasks. If you have any questions regarding these questions that we solved, you can ask. Thank you.